All right, Shalom Akim. Um, welcome back to another lesson. Um, today's lesson, I want to I want to um, go into the, today's lesson is going to be called the microchip, a brief history of its origins. You know, and um, I kind of wanted to go into this history a little while ago, which we did like a well did a um, something on Sentinels of GMS when it was still up on um, on YouTube, and um, did one of those you know read along. Um, lessons where it went into the breakdown of the um of the history of of the microchip you know which the history of the microchip is tied together with the history of um of the computer and the reason being is because the computer was created you know for really for our sakes to bring out this truth and for all the, these different um things that are exposed in esau out there all right and to make the information come out faster so what they did was they got together, you know, which we're going to go into the history of it. And they um, they asked these uh, certain men, which you're going to get into, to um, to come up with with uh, with some type of technology which would help store information, you know, into uh, um, to help uh, uh, um, store information and to help do it a lot faster, you know, for lack of better words. And the reason for that is because they wanted to, you know, get this information out there going, you know, and, and find a way to store information easier than to have, you know, to write it out and type everything out. That's why in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, in the fourth verse, the Lord said that knowledge shall increase. And it also said that that um, that they are wiser than Daniel. So all this technology that Esau has today was set up for us so that we can push this word out so, uh, you know, the ones of the elect out there among the tribes can wake up. All right, so right here, as you can see, I have pictures of, of these integrated circuits as another name for them, or the microchip. All right, and these all, you know, when you look in the motherboard, you'll have all these different little uh, uh, attachments, so to speak, you know, that you attach to make a computer run. One of the key ones was the microchip. All right, now what they did with this, with the microchip was they took it, and what they did was they, they made it to where they could insert it into your flesh and you know we're gonna go into that also you know so I'll just read, read a quick scripture you know because you have these uh, false prophets out here like General Gehenna um, Nate, uh, Nate the Seven Snakes as some brothers call them um, you know uh, and, diff and other guys comfy and all them that are saying that the microchip is not the mark of the beast you know which it is e everything leads to it everything is pointing to the microchip being the mark of the beast uh, on all levels so here in Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach chapter 5 verse 9 it says winnow not with every wind and go not into every way for so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue that's why you have <clears throat> mainly right now the, the, the uh, microscope the big ass microscope is on that big fat rat uh, General Gehenna alright and he's the main main one that's pushing that and alongside with Nate but we're going to focus on this guy, Kahena, this asshole. So it says, Win or not with everyone and go not into every way. Because what he's doing is he's confusing the people because the majority of the buffoons that follow him don't understand what's going on. They don't really know what's happening because they're mindless idiots. You know, that's why he's able to manipulate them. So he plays on their emotions and he plays on their ignorance. You know, and that's why they're all clapping and, you know, and, and doing all this stuff, you know, uh, cheering them on. When all he's doing is making a big mess on the table, you know, so he, call, he calls himself a man of the Lord, and all he's doing is making a big mess out of the Bible, you know, teaching vomit, basically. So it says, For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue, and he has a double tongue. Be steadfast in thy understanding, and let thy word be the same. So we're supposed to teach the same thing, you know, and we're supposed to keep the legacy from what was taught back then, the correct things that were taught back then, and the revelations that were, that were taught after, that that are being taught now, we're supposed to keep that that straight path. We're supposed to uh, teach the words the way it's supposed to be taught. You know, not like these sellouts are teaching. It says, "Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere." And we, when we do these things, we're doing it because we're sincere. We we're honestly trying to get you brothers that are out there of the elect to really see and understand what's going on and, and to see that these false prophets are leading the people astray. And it says, and with patience give answer. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. 
And that's what we're supposed to do. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. So if you don't really understand something, don't try to wing it. You know, go back, get the understanding, and then you can teach it. You know, so that way you don't look like you're, like you're struggling. It says, honor and shame is in talk, and, and the tongue of man is his fall. That's why General Gehenna is going, he's going to fall. And when he falls, he's going to fall big. Because he's, he's the, the worst Israelite right now. You know, we thought Comfy was the worst, but he's the worst Israelite right now, the worst sellout. So when he falls, he's going to fall because it says honor and shame is in talk. And all this dude does is just rants. And he's talking that shit about if Elder Tahar, to Elder Tahar won't call his show. First of all, if Elder Tahar called your show, nigga, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go on a rant. And you're going to out, out, uh, over speak and, and get all loud and boisterous and won't allow Elder Tahar to break anything down. Like your, your, your fat piece of shit friend that came down to uh, uh, four, uh, 34th. You know, first thing you start doing, just start flapping his, his jaws. That's what you're going to do. Either that or you're going to hang up on Elder Tar. Like you hang up on a brother from Seattle. Every time he calls you, you hang up on him because you're a piece of shit. It says, uh, <clears throat> be not called a whisperer and lie not in wait with thy tongue. For a foul shame is upon the thief and an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. So you're going to have an evil condemnation. But this is the point of the, the scripture here. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. That's why we're going into the history of the microchip, which is the history of the computer, which, which the microchip was also known as the integrated circuit. All right, so what I want to do is I want to pull up this first. Uh, um, these, are, these are different articles, you know, from different articles that I pulled up offline, and I kind of put them together. And whatever I added, I, I highlighted in green. You know, and the other highlights are just key points in it that I want to uh, make a point on. Now, you can go through this and read the whole information. But, you know, like I said, we when we get our information, we just go to the point. So it says, Histor historical evolution of computers. It says, in history of humanity, in, in the history of humanity, have built various types of aid instruments that man could calculate up to the modern digital computer because the main thing for the computer was to calculate all right and to store information here are some milestones in this story it shows the evolution of computers and devices for input output and data media see it's input output and data media in other words to put put information in take information out and to store you know for storage since the first person to build a calculating machine was a frenchman blaise blaise Pascal in 1642. It was a mechanical machine which only served to add, so it just added. So these are these are steps that 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 took place to uh, build up to what we have today as a computer. And then, but but on on another scale, it's also talking about the chip because in the chip you can add and and subtract information from it. All right. So now let's read on down. It says in 1666. All right, 666, Samuel Morbard creates a machine to add and subtract, and this is the machine here. All right, so now first it was the addition, now it's addition and subtraction. So this is the evolution of, of the computer, right? It says, already in 1674, Baron Wilhelm von Leibniz Gottfried in Germany built a mechanical calculator that not only, not, not only addition and subtraction, but also can perform multiplication and division. So you see how the scripture say knowledge shall increase. So little by little, they, they were building upon this, what we know today as a computer or the microchip. It says, in 1801, Jacquard invented a cardboard card that makes holes that are used to program a knitting machine. So basically it was set up to program a knitting machine, but it was a card. And that card had perforations in it or little holes in it. And then that's what where today you get your uh, uh you punch in at, at the job your punch cards, all right. And th that's where all this all that came from. But it was all for what to store information, all right. Like your time cards, like it says there on the side. And this is the machine here. <clears throat> it says later, 1822, Charles Babbage, a professor of mathematics at the University of Cambridge, designs and builds a different the difference engine. This was a mechanical device that could add and subtract and is used to make calculations using the finite differences uh, difference method using in particular was used to generate navigation tables 
the result is a recorded on the result is recorded on a copper plate as a disc which pierced the results similar to the jacquard weaving machine so he he uh, took that that uh <clears throat> idea of the perforated card and built upon it right inside of the machine so now now you see in the evolution of the, of the uh, computer and then you're probably saying well what what does this have to do with the microchip as we continue on you're going to you're going to see because th this is the just the origins of where the chip came from right and that's a picture of that devil it said this calculator worked correctly but could only run a single algorithm babbage devoted time and financial efforts in designing a general purpose computer called the analytical engine in 1834 this machine which was designed machine widespread differences had four basic components a store memory remember that's that's key you know because that was the main reason why these things were uh, was set up for for storage and what type of storage information not to store your canned goods it's to store information with capacity to store 50,000 digits this is used to store intermediate states variables and results a computer unit can be ordered for the four basic operations and can store results in memory see now keep that word in mind memory anytime you hear memory or data you know these are things for what for storage all right now let's read, read on down. It says in 1880 in 1844, Samuel Morse, which is where you get the term Morse code from, Samuel Morse sent a telegraph message from Washington to Baltimore, USA. All right. It says in 1889, Herman Hollerith won with his company called the Electrical the Electric Chadlating System a bid for the U.S. Census 1890. So back when he came up with with this uh, machine that he got, they called the Hollerith machine. All right, which we you know it, it, it evolved later into the IBM uh, 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 company. He won a patent from the government for the census, which was what the machine that he had. He came up with a system to to uh, keep track of people. All right, and mainly the people they want to keep track of is the Israelites. Okay, so now it says here. A bid for the U.S. Census 1890. Now, I added this here. The patent was called Art of Compiling Statistics. He called it data numerically. So, in other words, that was the name of the patent. I got this from another website. It said the patent was called Art of Compiling Statistics. What statistics? The statistics of people. Why? To organize them and to know how many so-called uh, uh, Puerto Ricans or so-called Negroes or so-called this or so-called that do you have in these particular areas. And that was the reason why it was set up. And we know that in the scriptures, uh, uh, we're not supposed to uh, number Israel. That's why the Most High jacked David up for, for numbering Israel. All right. Now, as we read on down, it says, Most, sense, uh, most census bureaus leased his equipment. Most of them leased his equipment. The Census Bureau was established by Act of Congress March 6th of 1902. All right, this was at the turn of the century, not too long after, excuse me, not the, around the same time where he had built this particular machine. Uh, and and the, the reference is in 32 Statute 51. Now, this is in the 13 United States Code or USC 3, Section 3. Now, this is, is a section of the Title 13 of the United States Code is, is a census. All right. Now, in Section 3 of this title is what you know as known as a seal. Like you have, like when you get, go to a notary public, you have a seal and you, they stamp it on a piece of paper to let you know that, that this particular uh, document is valuable now or is validated by this particular company or this particular uh, um, a government. The same thing when you go back in the ancient world, the king had a signet. And then with his signet, he would, you know, uh, some, some of them would put clay or some of them would put a, a really hot wax and then they would imprint the uh, signet. And then when you when that particular parcel or, or, or letter got to uh, whoever it went to, they knew that it was authentic based on the signet or the seal. So that's where th this uh, comes into play here. All right, this is text. Uh, this is when you read this uh, this uh, particular law. It says the bureau shall have a seal containing such device as has been selected heretofore, or as the secretary may select hereafter. A description of such seal with an impression thereof shall be uh, filled, filed in the office of the Secretary of State. 
the seal shall remain in custody of the secretary or such officer or employee of the bureau as he des designates. 